To paraphrase Macbeth, if President Trump decides to relocate the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, then twere well it were done quickly. That's one suggestion in a new Transition 2017 policy note that I've written for the Washington Institute. The move of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem has been talked about for years. Presidential candidates have made the promise. Donald Trump may be the first to implement that commitment. Now, it has been a self-evident truth that the costs of making the relocation of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem were much higher than the benefits. Of course, it's not self-evident. It needs a net assessment. And the net assessment would take into account the security implications, the political implications, and of course, the benefits that come with the relocation of the embassy from the coast to Israel's longtime capital. What are those benefits? Well, First and foremost, it is to repair an historic injustice. Many people may know that for 69 years, the United States has not recognized a single inch of Jerusalem, any part of Jerusalem, as Israel's capital. That, of course, puts Israel in a category all alone among world countries. What fewer people know is that the United States does maintain diplomatic representation in Jerusalem but for another power. For more than 20 years, the Consulate General in Jerusalem has, officially and formally, as its website states, been the de facto representative of the United States to the Palestinian Authority. This means that we are in the odd situation where the United States has diplomatic representation in Jerusalem to a different power, not to the government and people of Israel. But there's another benefit as well. And that would be to give a reset to all of our friends and allies in the Middle East, that the new administration follows through on its commitments, that it is there for its allies, and that its promise is its word. That's an important message to send as the administration begins to set out a broader set of policies, countering Iran, pushing back against its nefarious behavior, strengthening our partnerships around the region. Now, of course, there could be potential downsides. First and foremost, security. Security in uh, Jerusalem, in the relationship between Israelis and Palestinians, and even further afield. Now, if the administration decides, after doing a net assessment, that it wants to proceed with the embassy move, how should it do it? Well, in my view, there is a proper path to proceed. It begins with close consultations with the government of Israel. If it still wants to proceed after that consultation, then the Trump administration should swiftly and comprehensively begin uh, meetings with senior officials throughout the Middle East, our main Middle East partners in Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Turkey. Now here, our partners will all have items high on their agenda. We should be ready to hear it. We should not go to these capitals with the Jerusalem embassy move as our prime order of business, because it shouldn't be. It is one on a list, and the top of the list has to do with America's overall approach to addressing the fundamental problems affecting our allies and partners and interests in this part of the world. We need to speak with our European and other global partners. We need to explain our position and we need to try to find other countries that will join us in moving their embassies. After all, before 1980, 18 different countries had embassies in Jerusalem between the Six-Day War and when the United Nations Security Council urged countries to move out of the city. And then, of course, we need to have discussions with the Palestinians. The talking points are the same, that we're moving to repair an historic injustice, that we are not doing this move in order to take sides in the Israeli-Palestinian negotiation that both parties say will result in a permanent status agreement eventually over the final status and the final boundaries of Jerusalem. That the United States is not altering the status of the holy sites. We are not moving our embassy to that 1% of Jerusalem, which is the old city. That is a small piece of what is now a sprawling metropolis. And the purpose of the embassy move is to underscore 
that Jerusalem as an idea, Jerusalem as a city where people live, a city where Israelis have viewed their capital for 69 years, is legitimately viewed by the United States as its capital too. Palestinians should understand that this is not Washington's way of intervening in negotiations, that this is not Washington's way of taking sides. But if we can have diplomatic representation in the city for the Palestinians, then surely the United States can have diplomatic representation in the city for Israel too. If the Trump administration decides that this is an initiative it wants to pursue, it should move quickly. It should definitely not link this move to any 50th anniversary recognition of the Six-Day War, as some may suggest. That would muddy the waters as to the clear purpose of this. It is to fix a 48 issue. It is not to resolve disputes arising from the 67 Six-Day War. Also, let's remember, an embassy move is really two pieces, moving the ambassador's residence and moving the embassy. We have some easy, quick fixes that could address both. The ambassador currently has a hotel suite in Jerusalem, rented uh, for his use when he's in the city. This could become the temporary official residence of the American ambassador. And the United States has diplomatic facilities in Jerusalem, in West Jerusalem. This too could become the temporary official U.S. Embassy, pending the construction of a new facility on a 7.8 acre site identified as such years ago. Can the administration pull it off? It will require deft, creative, swift, effective diplomacy. It will have to put the embassy move in the broader context of re-engaging American leadership in the Middle East. And we will have to be clear about what it means and what it doesn't mean. There will be pushback, but at least I believe there is now an action plan that an administration could pursue if it wants to proceed with this important initiative. To read more about it, please see the Washington Institute's website, Transition 2017 Papers to the New Trump Administration.